we got on the train, so we went from Antwerp to Brussels, which is on a short train ride, and the train that we were taking was the Berlin Paris Express. So the train was coming from Berlin. It was midnight, cold, cold winter. And we got on the train with our suitcase. And you know these long-term trains? You had a long hallway, and then you had these compartments. So my mom opened compartments, and there were Germans sitting, because they had come, the train came from Berlin. There were maybe three people in an eight-person compartment. But the minute she opened the door, they said, 999. Nine, nine. So they didn't want anybody. And that went on. We were in this one car, in this one train car. And they, nobody would let us in. And there were many people in the, in the hall, you know. So we sat down on a suitcase, which is what, you know, but when, when, this, when the train started moving, it got to be very, very cold because the air was blowing through and we were freezing. So mom, in her impeccable German, opened, opened the door and said, would you be willing to let our children come and sit with you? It's very cold out there and they're very uncomfortable. And there was a man, a German soldier, who was probably a little older. I don't know how old he was, but he would probably have been in his 40s. And another man and maybe a woman. I, there were three people. And this man said, oh, how many are you? And she said, well, there's our children and my husband and me. OK, why don't you just come on in? And so the four of us, with our suitcase, went in. And we sat down. And my mom started talking with him. And he was telling us that he had gone to home, to Germany, on a, on a, a furlough. And he had loved seeing his family. And he was very sad because he had to go back to Paris. And sort of you, you had the effect that he wasn't all that enchanted with the you know, the opportunity to go to Paris. He wanted to be home with his family. And I don't rem remember anything about the other two people. But then he was very bright, and as was my mother. So they started talking about, oh, my mom had read German literature, and she knew about German classical music or whatever. So they were having this wonderful conversation. Dad kept his mouth shut, because Dad would have come up with some Yiddish here and there. And my sister and I didn't say anything either, although both of us understood what was going on. And then the train stopped. And it was between, on the border between Belgium and France. And so the guy said, oh, well, you know, it's, it's control. So the, 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 the door opens, and there's this young German guy who says, OK, papers. But he didn't mean the other folks. He meant us. So dad presents him with this document that he had bought, you know, gotten. God looks at it, looks at it, looks at it, and he says, etwas stimmt hier nicht, which means there's something wrong here. He says to dad, I want to see your passport. And so dad goes into his pocket, you know, he says, gee, I, I don't have it on me. Maybe it's in my suitcase. And he takes down his suitcase and starts looking in the suitcase. And I was panic stricken. And I thought, why on earth did he not keep track of his passport? And he kept looking. And he says, gee, I don't know where it is. I was looking, he's looking. And after I don't know how long, the German officer said to the young man, just go, they're OK. And he said, like that? And he walks out. I found out later on that my father did not find, want to find his passport. It was a Polish passport. <clears throat> he had another ID that had a Jew number on it. 
he didn't want anything to show other than that paper, which he thought was going to be. And so the irony there, he, we would have been pulled off the train. And the irony there was that our lives were saved by a German officer 